Okay, welcome back to Food Service Education. Uh, my name is Michael and I am your Certified Food Service Protection Manager Remote Instructor. I'm also a Certified Proctor and Instructor with ServeSafe. And uh, this channel has exploded in growth and extremely excited to go over this new material I'm releasing on this page on this channel. So if you're new and um, you are looking to expand on your safety and sanitation, if you are looking to work towards earning your either your food handler um, certificate or your food service protection manager certificate, or maybe you're looking to study for the National Registry Food Service Professional Industry Cert. All of that is going to be covered in this material. We may not be speaking specifically to health guard material, but at the end of the day, the one concept I want you to be able to take away from all this is that safety and sanitation is safety and sanitation. Okay, sure, there's different methods and there's different course books that you can get, but at the same day, at any given day, it's all going to be about the same material. How do we keep the consumer from getting sick? What is, it, what is our responsibility in the kitchen, in the operation, to prevent the spread of bacteria? That's the premise behind this entire channel. And sure, there are different playlists and there's different concepts for you to choose from. Whether you want to do the seventh edition, right? That's going to be the food protection manager cert or you wanna dive into the more comprehensive version that we've just started putting out, which we have seen a huge growth spike in, or maybe maybe you're not the, maybe you're not the, I wanna sit down and listen to this guy talk for 45 minutes kind of person. And that's okay with you. That's why we recently, a few months ago, started posting YouTube shorts to, um, to accommodate those kind of learners. Maybe you're the 60 seconds or less. Give me the Cliff Notes version versus the long version. We have something here on this channel to offer every single one of you. Now, recently, and I say recently because it was recent, I want to pull up our channel. Recently in a community poll, I asked a very specific question. I'm going to search for it. If you work near or around food, most industries in the food service arena will make you take this basic course. So I put out a poll and luckily two people voted, yes, let's, let's, it'd be great if you can post something on that. Okay. So today, I'm going to answer that poll by creating a series called the Food Handler Safety and Sanitation Guide, okay? Now, theoretically, you can sit and watch any number one of my videos and get about the same information. The only difference is, and by the way, you know, come check out our community. Come check out our our post here. We, we, I do my best to keep you guys posted on things that are new. Um, I've also, I just started posting knowledge-based questions to see what the community is absorbing as far as the information that comes out of it. You know, if you want to know what's going on, the best thing you can do, there's two things you can do. Subscribe to the channel and enable notifications. Okay, maybe there's three things to do. That was two, right? And then the third thing is to come over to the community page and check out our posts. Because if there's something important that I want you to be aware of, I'm going to put it in the community chat here. There's actually four ways. If you love this information so much and you're finding complete value, but for $3 a month, you'll gain access. $3 per month, you'll gain access to this study guide. And it has already helped four people that have joined our community. And um, it's just a great way to have access to different forms of the content 
rather than sit here and have to handwrite everything. Here's a little sample of what you'll get. This is what it is right here, okay? These are handwritten notes by a student. She took and passed her industry certification, not just her Serve Safe Food Protection Manager, but her National Registry Food Service Professional Cert and passed it all on the first try. And these are her notes. She took some time to actually handwrite these notes so that I could give them out to students. Okay, so you know, definitely check out our Patreon page. We've been advertising a lot for it. Um, and then if you take your certification and you pass it, share your testimony with us. So we would love to celebrate your success. We would love to pass on additional information, anything we can do to inspire you guys to pour into this content more and more. Because obviously, I have not gotten good at what I do without repetition. If there's anything I have learned, it has come down to that one word, repetition. I can sit and pass this test with a flying score, and I can do it in less than 90 minutes, which is the average time it takes to take the actual full 7th edition exam, okay? Um, I can't even begin to tell you how much repetition has played into my success as an instructor, but also into the success of my students that take the test and pass it. So lots of resources on this channel, okay? Lots of things for you to study. And if you want, obviously, you want to see my cooking channel, you can see that I live this life 24-7. 24-7. So I wanted to take the time to respond to that poll that everyone voted yes when it came to me taking the time to record information pertaining to the safe food handler. I'll include a bunch of timestamps, however I decide to go about it. I hope that you find this information helpful. And if you have questions, the best thing you can do is check out the description and the comments. Okay, you can ask as many questions. I love reading, responding, and getting back to you guys, whether it's a tip or a feedback or just my personal opinion. Um, utilize this channel, utilize this community to help you succeed. All right, so as we dive into this content, um, I just want you to take away that it's going to be about a two and a half hour lecture. Um, it could be shorter, it could be longer, it depends on do you get the comprehensive version of Chef Pesci or do you get literally the PowerPoint by PowerPoint guide. However you want to go about it, check the description for timestamps, you can skip around. Maybe you want to study a portion of this material and come back and study it later. That's what the timestamps are there for. Also pay attention to any symbols that I put in the timestamps because most of the time the symbols represent that this is material you should know because it's important because it will be on your test. Now to be honest with you, um, I'm going to tell you something when I don't know something. I'm going to tell you something when I do know something. I am not a food handler. I am beyond a food handler. So you may get a longer version of my lecture be just because I am well advanced. I'm way past the food handler when it comes to certification. Okay. So, but I'll do my best to try to stick to the PowerPoint as much as possible. And I'll do my best to give you all the information you need. Okay. The assessment will be given um, by your employer. Okay. I don't do assessments on this page. Um, tests usually last about 40 minutes. Um, what else? Really, the best thing you can do is you can, I'll, I'll include a link to where you can get this, or I might find a way to download it and put it in the description or additional resources folder. Okay. But the best way is to look at the Serve Safe Food Handler Guide. Okay. And that will answer additional questions. But let's go ahead, let's dive into the food handler. So food safety is important. Yes, without a doubt, food safety is important. Um, you can use your book 
um, when following this slideshow. But if you don't have a book, that's okay, because that's the purpose of this material being uploaded on YouTube is that you don't need to purchase the book. It's all right here. So save yourself the cost and prepare yourself to just study and pass this test. Okay, that's all I want you to take away from. So concepts you will learn. These are our learning objectives. You're going to learn what a foodborne illness is. You're going to learn that there are three different ways food gets contaminated. And you're going to learn five common behaviors that cause a foodborne illness. Now, if you hear background chimes or birds chirping or sound effects in the background, I'm actually, for the first time, not in my recording studio where I usually record these videos. I am in another state on vacation and I'm outside. So I'm testing out how things work outside because um, sound bounces off in uh, my recording studio in ways that it doesn't bounce off when you're outside. So if you hear an echo or you hear just background noise, please just bear with me, okay? So there are three ways food becomes contaminated. Obviously, these are the three ways. We've got biological, chemical, and physical. Physical is going to be these little metal shavings that you see in this number 10 can here. And we call them number 10s because they're the big cans that you find out in the commercial industry. We have our polishes that we are constantly cleaning throughout the industry. And sometimes those particles, what goes up, eventually comes back down. They land onto food contact surfaces and then people can get sick through those sources. And then we have biological. Okay, Biological contaminants are tiny forms of life. Okay, things that you can't see, taste, or smell. These include bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. Okay, these little harmful bacterials can get into your intestinal tract and make you severely sick. So we want to make sure at all costs we are understanding how food becomes contaminated and how we can prevent it. Okay, this is the premise. So if you're taking notes, this is one thing you should write down because this is going to be formed off of everything that we talk about when it comes to the prevention measures to prevent the spread of bacteria. Chemicals in your operation can contaminate food. These include your cleaners, your sanitizers, and your polishes. And then some examples of physical hazards that you may not see in this slide right now would be natural occurring fish bones in fish. Okay, if we don't carefully remove those those pin bones, we call them in the industry. If we don't remove them, we can potentially serve it and then a customer ingests that and they can, they can get very sick from that. So uh, metal shavings we talked about, staples, dirt, glass, bandages, and jewelry. We're going to talk about all the prevention measures coming up. So how food becomes unsafe. We purchase food from unsafe sources. The best way I can describe this page to you is that Jimmy up the street is selling his famous honey. There's a guy, not in my neighborhood where I live, but there's a guy up the street who does exactly what I just said. I don't know his name, but every time I drive past his house, he has a little stand advertising his honey. He puts it out and he does the honest system. So you pull up, he has a little cash box you can deposit money in and you can grab your honey. Um, the problem with purchasing from Jimmy's stand up the street is this. He's not an approved source. Okay, an approved source will have backing, it'll have proper licensure, it will have inspect uh, inspections. <laughs> it will have inspections, a little humor from Chef Pesci. Okay, these people are the people you want to buy from. You only want to buy from approved, reputable suppliers. And you're going to hear me talk about that coming up. Okay? But we never want to buy from a farm that may not be inspected. We don't know how they process their honey. We don't know if they're inspected by the state. What if they're producing this inside of a house? What if they're producing this and slapping gluten-free on the packaging, but indeed their kitchen is not a dedicated gluten-free environment? which means traces of small pieces of gluten falling into that honey could potentially get somebody sick. That's why we have to buy from approved, reputable suppliers. 
What's wrong with this picture? Okay, pathogens can transfer from the body to the food. Okay, this is poor personal hygiene. And it's one way that makes food unsafe. I mean, you're probably saying, chef, who would sneeze on a customer's food? You would be surprised what happens in the restaurant industry. Here's one example. It's very hard for me to go out to eat. It's very hard for me to sit down at a restaurant and enjoy the experience because 98% of the time I am so laser in focused on everyone in an operation that I pay attention to things that people that don't work in the food service industry would pay attention to. I once saw a server with long artificial fingernails, which is a no-no in ServeSafe. Okay, you'll learn about that, um, especially if you go for your food service protection manager cert. Um, there are things that I have seen that you would probably say, no, that stuff doesn't happen, but indeed it does. Trust me. Uh, that's why courses like this exist. Okay, to teach people who are serving around food what and what not to do. Now, the one most important aspect I want you to take away from when you're going through this course is this. You're a food handler. If you're studying this information, you will have a person on site within your operation that will hold the Serve Safe Food Protection Manager cert. Obviously, that industry cert is this certification on steroids. Okay, so they have a little bit more knowledge, but the best thing we can do is to lean on our managers because they are the ones who can teach us further and go deeper into the concepts on how to keep food safe and what prevention measures we could put in place. What's wrong with this picture? Everything's wrong with this picture. Uh, I've worked in culinary classrooms where I've seen students cut on the same cutting board and just like that small concept that's that's common sense to a lot of people in the industry is not so common uh lead practice it's not so commonly practiced in the industry you should never cut raw chicken on a cutting board where you're preparing ready to eat food and that lettuce is classified as ready to eat food okay cross contamination occurs when pathogens are transferred from one surface to another Okay. What's wrong with this picture? Well, if we take a look at the thermometer, doesn't look like it's properly reading proper safe levels. That's just my observation. We got a little thing called time temperature abuse here. It's when food sits for way too long for it to grow bacteria. And remember, we talked about this. You can't see, smell, or taste bacteria. That's what makes it so incredibly dangerous. I'm going to do my best to really honestly stick to the food handler slides here and not go too much into depth because you can find that information on my other PowerPoints if you, if you want to go a little bit more in depth. Okay, But we have a time temperature issue here. The thermometer is reading 50. It should be reading 41 degrees or lower. I'm assuming based on where this is sitting within the operation, it's sitting on a shelf, which is potentially that silver backing there is usually what a walk-in looks like. That means that refrigerator is out of temperature and they need to do something fixed to qu quickly fix that or move the food into a better controlled environment to prevent it from becoming un, uh, becoming contaminated through unsafe sources or practices. What's wrong with this picture? Uh, based on my personal opinion, I can tell you he's wiping, his cutting his, his knife, okay? Remember, we talked about what cross-contamination is. It's the transfer of bacteria from one surface to another. Instead of washing his knife, rinsing his knife, and sanitizing it, he is getting lazy, or she's getting lazy, this happens all too often in the industry. We get too lazy or we hear all too often as managers, oh, I was in a rush. That's the problem. You should not be in a rush. Slow down. Think before you do. There's an old saying my dad used to say, think before you speak. 
And trust me, that's a big one. That's a big concept. But we're not talking about that, okay? Think before you do. Pathogens can transfer from incorrectly clean surfaces to food, right? We don't know what's on that cloth. We don't know where that cloth has been. It could have been used to wipe off a cutting board with raw chicken juice. Now we're wiping our knife. We're transferring that bacteria onto ready-to-eat food because green, a green cutting board is used for preparing produce, which is classified as ready-to-eat because it doesn't most produce doesn't need any additional cooking for it to be considered safe. We cook food to proper temperatures to prevent the spread of bacteria. Okay? And so he's wiping his knife down and we don't know what bacteria is on that rag. So you just got to be mindful of things like that. There's so many things that we do as food handlers in the industry that we don't even know we're doing it half the time. Managers as well. No one is exempt when it comes to the prevention measures of food safety. I don't care if you have a serve safe food protection manager. I don't care if you've been in the industry for 25, 30 years. I've worked with people that have been in the industry for that long and still do stupid stuff. You got to use common sense or you're going to get someone sick and you're going to have a whole slew of other issues on your hand. Uh, that timestamp's at 1350. We should remove the curse word. Um, so leaving raw chicken breast on a prep table is time temperature abuse because it's out of temperature. It's being allowed to sit out. We let food sit out. We can essentially let food slip into temperature danger zones, and that's where bacteria is going to grow. We call that time temperature abuse. Sneezing on the salad, okay, that's a poor personal hygiene, right? Cross-contamination obviously would be the transfer of bacteria, so you would have to physically transfer that bacteria from one surface to another. Poor cleaning and sanitizing, no. Time temperature abuse we just talked about, so it's definitely poor personal hygiene. Using the same cutting board to cut up raw chicken, then using it to slice tomatoes, so ready-to-eat food should be nowhere near Raw food, that is by definition cross-contamination. Um, using the same cutting board could allow pathogens to transfer from chicken to tomatoes. Scraping off baked on food from an otherwise clean plate, that's poor cleaning and sanitizing. Practice good personal hygiene. Obviously, the best way we can practice personal hygiene we could do several things, but one of the most important things is making sure that we frequently and regularly wash our hands. Those hand sinks should not be used for anything but hand washing. Actually, where I am right now, I'm in another state, and I walked into a coffee store the other day, and again, remember, it's very hard for me being a certified everything when it comes to safety and sanitation to walk into an operation and not think twice about what's going on behind the counter. I pay attention to everything. You might come into a coffee store, stand beside me, and you know just be happy to be in, in the environment smelling the fresh coffee, but I go beyond that. I mean, my eyes catch things that I teach on a daily basis what not to do. And this operation, they were literally storing their dirty dishes in their hand-washing sink. If I was the health inspector and I walked in and I saw that, I would dock you. I would put that as a violation because the hand sink is only supposed to be used for one purpose, washing your hands. And that should be happening in your operation on a frequent and regular basis. I've always said this to my students in the classroom. If I'm not purchasing soap on a monthly basis, then you're not washing your hands enough. Rinsing your hands under water, it ain't going to do it. You have to properly wash your hands. We're going to talk about that coming up in another chapter. Um, it's good personal hygiene. Uh, hands are being washed. It prevents the transfer of pathogens to food. Absolutely. Okay. Think of your operation or where you're working 
it needs to be as sterile as an operating room. If you've ever had surgery, it's not like the movies where you are reeled into this room and you have this suspense music in the background. It is literally just another room with people standing in the room ready to operate on you. Um, I haven't been in an operating room for severe cases. I've been in an operating room for unsevere cases. I mean, we're not talking life or death. But when you walk into the operating room, it's sterile. Everything is sterile. That's how your kitchen should be. Uh, controlling time and temperature of food. We obviously, we don't let food stay too long at temperatures that's good for bacteria to grow. If you were paying attention to my introduction, I, I asked a question regarding temperature. You can uh, go on my community posts and you can check that out and see what people are voting. Um, I will always comment in on those eventually and let people know if they're uh, answering the correct questions or not. But we want to make sure that we're properly checking temperatures and making sure that food stays where it needs to be. The old saying is we keep hot food hot, 135 degrees or higher, and cold food cold, 41 degrees or lower. Anything in between is dangerous. It's where pathogens will grow. Pathogens, think of pathogens as bacteria. How is temperature being controlled in the photo? Uh, the temperature is being checked, so the food handler is doing his job, okay? And he probably will log that somewhere, either on a piece of paper or in a manager's book, okay? He's ensuring that the food is being held at the correct temperatures. And if it's not, he's going to discard it. We're not going to take that risk in the industry. Uh, prevent cross-contaminations. Obviously, we don't want to transfer the bacteria from one surface to another. We don't want to transfer the bacteria from one food to another. Again, whether it's food or food contact surfaces where you're preparing the food, it is the transfer of bacteria, the transfer of bacteria from one surface to another that causes bacteria to grow, that causes people to get sick because of cross-contamination. All right, I want you to describe how the food in this photo is being prepared and prepped in a way that prevents cross-contamination. Take a second, pause the screen. If you're an instructor, if you're a teacher and you're showing this to your class, go ahead and pause the screen and ask your students to explain what's going on in this photo what are the good things that are happening and then obviously you're going to hear me give you the answer which i'm going to give you the answer now so go ahead and pause the screen or you're going to get the answer so we're wearing single-use gloves hopefully that person washed his or her hands properly uh he's using a green cutting board green cutting board is great because we use different color color cutting boards in the industry um, to separate and prevent the chances of food from getting contaminated. Red would be for meat, white would be for ready-to-eat food, yellow for, for raw poultry, um, gluten products would be prepared on a purple cutting board, seafood would be prepared on a blue cutting board, and, and so forth. Uh, there are so many different other colors, and they all have different um, classifications as to what you should prepare on them, but on here, on here, we're using the right cutting board. Um, green for produce. So this person is properly preparing food. Uh, your role is to keep food safe. As a food handler, if you're working in and around food, you're using this course to help you study and prepare, whether you're using it as a base foundation to maybe someday Sync up the courage to uh, go from a basic industry certification to an advanced certification, which would be the seventh edition playlist or the comprehensive playlist or the beta version to the other playlists. Okay. Maybe one day you'll get there, but it's your job as a food handler. If you're working in an operation under a manager to clean and sanitize surfaces correctly, keep everything clean, 
Clean and sanitize anything that touches food. Do it often. All right, go ahead and describe. We're going to do the same exact concept here. Go ahead and describe what the person is doing correctly in this operation. What you see this person is doing correctly is hopefully they scraped, washed, rinsed, and now they are sanitizing. Now, one thing I want you to take away from when sanitizing in a three compartment sink is understanding how long something has to be immersed inside, completely submerged under that water for it to come in contact with the surface that it's sanitizing. We want to make sure that if we're using a quat sanitizer, which is commonly used in three compartment sinks, that it's submerged in that water, in that liquid, not just dipped in there and removed to air dry, but submerged for at least 30 seconds before removing it so that it comes in contact and sanitizes properly. Okay. Um, second things food handlers will not have common knowledge of, and that's the, the industry professional, the food service protection manager's job to make sure that that sanitizing solution is at proper sanitation levels. So use your dipsticks or your drawstring, your drawstrings, your draw, your draw, is it a dr No. There is a test strip you can use to check the proper concentration levels. Okay. All right, so that's going to do it for chapter one of the food handler. Um, if you found value in this video, one of the best things you can do is smash that like button. What that does is it positions us within the YouTube algorithm to be recommended when somebody is looking for safety and sanitation on YouTube in the search results. Okay, helps position our videos towards the top. And obviously, the more likes, the more it's going to be recommended. So again, if you have any questions, please check out the um, comments down below and um, feel free to ask any questions. I will always respond. Please make sure that um, if you found value and you want to see additional content, you check out our other playlists. Um, if you're a food handler, I would stick to the food handler playlist and playlist only just because everything else is going to be a little bit more advanced and about the food service protection manager certification. And then if you want to be part of this community and, and part of its growth, there are two ways you can do that. Okay. You can subscribe and enable notifications and you can also check out our Patreon page where you can support us every single month. All those donations go to helping us continue to create awesome content and they support us as the content creators to continue researching ways to grow this channel so that you can stay up to date and have a reliable source to pull anytime you need something related to food safety. That's going to do it for this chapter. I will record a separate chapter. And uh, again, thank you for being part of our session today.